Hi guys! This time I visit the steamship Stettin from 1933. It served as an icebreaker in the Baltic Sea. Let's see the details of the ship and especially the machine room with the steam engine. This ship is currently moored in the harbor of Flensburg, Germany as part of a visit. That's the docking line size they use to moor the ship. And look how massive and solid the cleat is built. How oh, nice! Historically appropriate fender, probably made of sisal. Ah, and there is the ladderway to the crew compartments, beautifully clad in wood. To cover the operation costs, the ship offers short tours for tourists. That's why here are so many seats. The boiler is currently active because the ship wants to depart in two hours. Usually they have to start the boiler three hours in advance. This is the rear mooring winch. The winch is steam operated and uses the gear to turn the winch roll as necessary. This is the control lever. And here is the steam supply line. It is operated locally by a crew member when in use. That's his seat. It doesn't look very comfy. The cover protects the winch operator from the weather and the dangers of a breaking rope. But let's see the machine room now. That's the upper floor and the top of the steam engine. The hatches at the top are open to release hot air. They also provide some natural light to enter the room. The device in front of us is the rudder steering gear. The gear is connected to the rudder via long rods along the decks. Now I use the ladder way down, of course backwards for safety. It's really warm here. Obviously, here the heat is generated. And the guy told me that they have three cylinders here. So I don't know. I see one, two, three, four. That's the main electric power generator. It provides electric energy for the whole ship. It's rated for 150 volts and 135 amps. That's a power of 15.5 kilowatts. And that's the turbo power generator. It has a power rating of 4 kilowatts and is used as an emergency backup only. That's the lubing department. A lot of moving parts need to be looped manually. That's why you see all the oil cans on the desk. The oil containers are used to store the necessary different types of oil. Ah, the crankshaft in motion. On the left connecting rod you see a little container which contains oil. The line from this runs to the crankshaft bearing shell and provides the lubing. This container needs to be continuously monitored and refilled manually when necessary. So obviously it is very labor intensive to operate this steam engine. The diagram shows the steam water cycle. Basically, the oven heats up the water to generate steam. The steam is used in three pressure optimized cylinders connected in series. The outgoing steam is cooled down the seawater in a steam condenser. So, the inner steam loop is a closed system. Only seawater as a coolant is continuously taken from the sea and put back to the sea. Just a little bit warmer. As you can see here, that's one of the water pumps of the inner steam circuit. Here you see the gauge panel for the chief engineer with displays for several pressure values, revolutions per minute and time. Next to it you see the engine telegraph, which provides a simple two-way communication to the bridge. To have redundancy, a backup engine telegraph is installed here. some gorges there. You can see that the boiler pressure is already at 10 bar. 13 to 14 bar is required for operation. This is the electric switchboard and fuse box. It's nice to see the old porcelain fuses here. 
but also digital control systems are installed for more efficient monitoring, so it was possible to reduce the headcount of the engine crew compared to the old days. Welcome to the boiler department! Several ovens are fueled by coal to provide sufficient heat to generate the required steam. To operate the ship on sea, one ton of coal per hour is necessary. The coal bunker has a capacity of 180 tons, so in theory the ship can be on sea continuously for 180 hours, that's seven and a half days. The boilermen have already started some of the ovens, now they are starting the rest. For this, they build up a pile of coal in the front of the oven and set it on fire. I leave the oven door open so the fire gets air from the side. You can also use this lever to open the airflow from below the grate. Okay. Because the rear part of the grate is still empty, the air would bypass the pile of coal in the front. So I leave the oven door open as long as the grate is not filled with coal. You can see how the air is flowing in and pushing the flame back. Ah, okay, this is only for starting the oven and later the air flows from below the grate. What type of coal are you using here? Is it hard coal? Yes, it's a specific hard coal from Poland. In the world of coal, this one is a very good one. It starts well, it burns well and generates a low amount of slack. The size of the lumps of coal is very good and the number of small fragments is low. So you don't have issues with resupplying the coal? Well, we have stored coal that will last until next year. After that, we will see what to do. This is a challenge, as the price for the coal has almost doubled since the last supply. And one ton of coal is used in one hour. That is something. And what is this? That is slack. This is almost the worst case when slack builds up. How comes? The oven temperature was too high. The oven temperature is at about plus 800 degrees centigrade. The remains of the coal build regular ash. If the temperature is about plus 1000 degrees Celsius, the remains melt. And that causes the slag? Exactly, that's the way the slag builds up instead. Okay, we are back on the front deck. Let's have a look on the bow. That's the front winch and the anchor chain attached. Here the anchor chains go down to the anchor locker. Look how massive the chain is made and how the winch is attached to the chain. Here you can clearly see that the winch is steam operated. Some water trips down on the hot surface. <laughs> it's really nice to see. Ball. It's pulled up while anchoring. This is a warning signal for other ships to keep distance. Ah, and there is the wardroom. 
I need to have a look inside. That's the wall of emblems. All emblems have a relation to the ship. They are from visited ports, visited fairs, visited ships, etc. And there is the wardroom. It's a cozy place. of the ship you can see the shape of the hull and how it is formed for the ice breaking the bow is angled so it pushes itself onto the ice and breaks it by the mess of the ship I don't exactly know what this is maybe the interior of a compass This is some kind of fractured steel. When I consider the thickness of the steel, a tremendous amount of force must have deformed it. Maybe some kind of steam overpressure has caused this, but I'm not sure. A historically correct tube radio from the old days. and a historic telephone with a rotary dial. I wonder if it still works. Here we see the captain's or navigator's office. For security and mandatory reasons, the equipment is up to date, but it still has historic charm. Note the stuffed one, which is looking out of the window. So you have seen my overview of the historic steam icebreaker Stettin. If you are not already a valued subscriber, you now have the chance to become one. Video making is not free. Please support my channel by donating one dollar or more to the PayPal address I provided in the video description. Give a thumbs up, leave a nice comment and stay tuned for more videos. I will see you next time. Bye bye.